there's not any serious evolutionary purpose to to live you know after you're gonna have children and i think that in the modern lifestyle my personal opinion is that everybody needs supplements welcome to the seam lund podcast i'm your host seam lund and today our guest is joe cohen joe is the founder and ceo of self decode me and joe had a conversation at our retreat in india at a five-star hotel and longevity clinic in this episode we discuss our experience seventh time yeah <laughs> when was the first time uh, my first time in the program was in 2019, March 2019. Oh, well, this is before. Yeah, that, that was easy, the, before the program even started, really. Mm. So I w- it was like starting to bud, and I did a bunch of treatments. I did the ultrasound, the CT scan. I didn't do the whole body MRI then, but obviously they do it now. And uh, yeah, th- there's certain tests that were added that I didn't do then. For example, the last time I did a a uh, screening t- uh, cancer screening test in the blood mm. so similar to a grail test right so i've done that um that's like an example of a new test they added they also added some of the biomarkers i told them to add the amino acid panel which i think is very important because that's been a game changer in a lot of things i'm doing mm. right. for example it's just not, it wouldn't, it wasn't clear to me what amino acids that I was a deficient in any amino acids, right? You would think that if you eat enough protein, you won't be deficient in amino acids, but mm. that's actually not true. What well, one things like then affect that if you're eating like, you know, meat, you would expect getting everything. I think it's more influenced by utilization, right? So Cut. it's, it's not so, not even the gut, uh, just how much you utilize the amino acids. So. Even if you consume a lot, if you utilize them more, mm. it'll just be lower in the blood. And the utilization depends on nutrients that you're consuming. So if you're maybe you're consuming more of one nutrient, mm. you might utilize an amino acid more. Gotcha. And for example, B6 causes the utilization of a lot of amino acids. And so if you're taking other supplements, sometimes other supplements will increase the utilization. So Let's say, uh, I, I don't know if this is the case, but let's say HMB is a, a supplement that maintains muscles, right? Mm. One, like a lot of the mechanisms by which we maintain muscle mass is not breaking down muscle. That is the main mechanism, right? It right. decreases catabolic, catabolism. And so if you decrease catabolism, then the, the, the body uses that as a mechanism to increase amino acids in your blood when needed. Mm. But the thing is, I'd actually take a bunch of things that decrease the catabolism, which means that I don't break down the amino acids very much. I more right. like use them, but don't break down my uh, muscles very much, which can be a good thing. But also, I noticed that when I exercise a fair bit, mm. my amino acids, a lot of them are low because it's I think used. it's used and then if I'm taking certain supplements, maybe certain nutrients that are helping utilization, and then certain supplements that prevent catabolism, mm. yeah. all of a sudden that could be one of the reasons why they're lower, right? Certain amino acids, even if I am taking it and certain amino acids are being utilized more than others. So for example, I noticed if I eat more protein, the certain amino acids that just go off if I generally eat more protein. That includes tyrosine and phenylalanine. And the reason, I think, is because those are not really utilized by exercise very much. They're utilized by other processes. Mm. And for whatever reason, like there's just a limit in how much you're going to use. So if you if you consume a lot of protein, I just notice my tyrosine and phenylalanine go up. Yeah. Right. That's pretty responsive right. to uh how much protein I eat. On the other hand, as I have eaten more protein, I told you I eat uh, 215 mm-hmm. grams of protein a day, something right. like that, which is a lot. Mm-hmm. My leucine is still low. Mm-hmm. I mean, like the range is, uh, it's somewhere, the range is like 68 to 183, but my leucine tested a bunch of times, it hovers around 70, mm-hmm. which, is, which is quite low. Uh, given that I consume a lot of whey, I have a hundred grams. Is it because of the increased protein synthesis? I think so. So my muscle mass has been going up, and I just think that what I notice is that if my body's fighting an infection, 
it takes the leucine because your body needs leucine for, uh, you know, different immune proteins. And if I'm working out or if I'm exercising, my, my muscles just soak up the leucine. Mm. And then I think could be certain nutrients, certain B vitamins or certain nutrients, uh, that I'm taking could be they utilize leucine more, which could be a good thing. But then what happens is, is that the serum levels are low and there's kind of like, you know, my body doesn't want to break down muscle tissue, but then the leucine levels are lower. Whereas I find that the isoleucine is like my isoleucine and isoleucine is worse. There's some negative effects from having higher isoleucine, but now my isoleucine went a little down just because I'm just taking leucine instead of branch chain amino acids. Right. Yeah, and, and there's a bunch of examples like that with different amino acids that were just low. And yeah, I, I remember like last time I haven't gotten the amino acid report yet, but the uh, last time my glycine levels were, you know, I'll, I'm taking a lot of glycines, I would expect to be much higher, <laughs> but uh, they were like near normal, but like slightly like lower. Uh, is there like any reason why that would be like, is it due for collagen synthesis or is it due for glutathione? Yeah, so the glycine, I think, is a little different. But number one is it's the utilization. Mm. And number two, I think the half-life of glycine is pretty short. Mm. But why it's still important to understand what your glycine levels are is because if you have lower glycine, it helps to frequently take glycine throughout the day. Good. It's kind of like vitamin C is that you take vitamin C it's not going to last that long in the blood, mm. but still, if you have low vitamin C, it's still a good idea to take it frequently. frequently. And, um, yeah. And, and, you know, you, you digest it over time and then maybe it doesn't stay in the blood, but every time you ingest it, it's like a four or five hour bump. And the thing is the next day, it's probably not going to show up very much just because it, it's going to have some impact, mm. but it's not going to be huge because, um, you know, but you're probably taking it 12 hours before the blood test, right? At least. Mm. Like, do you, you know, if you take it at 8 p.m. and you do a blood test at 8 a.m., that's 12 hours. Right. So it's not going to be that significant in the blood. It'll be somewhat because, you know, you're, you know, you're kind of feeding all the glycine your system needs. Um but but I don't think it's the, uh, it's going to be huge. So you have certain amino acids like that that it's not super responsive to what you're intaking. Mm. But they do these studies that show like if you have a tendency for higher glycine, there's certain benefits, right? right? And so same with vitamin C. If you have like higher vitamin C, higher glycine, higher this that, there could be benefits to having higher levels of certain amino acids, and even if you're taking it and it's not responding that much, it's still probably good to take it because at least for most of the day, you know, 16 hours a day, you could still have it more elevated. Mm. And, you know, maybe eight hours, it's not going to be that elevated, but who cares? Gotcha. Are there any tests that you do more frequently or, or are you doing it the morning at Ivo when you come? I try to do as much testing as possible with as many things as possible. So there's always things you could optimize to some degree. One of the things that I'm optimizing now is my total serum protein. Hmm. So the, the range in, that they give in the test is like 6.1 to 8.1 or something or 8.5. I don't know. It's a pretty broad range. But... The optimal range is actually you want to be above 6.5. So recently it's been above 6.5 when I really increase my protein intake. Mm. Uh, but I actually want to get it even higher because if my body's fighting infection, it goes down often or it, it could even go up. So that's the tricky thing is it could either go down and up. If it goes down because it's utilizing it, mm. if it goes up, it's because my body's breaking down muscle. So I remember one time I had an infection, it went up because it was very clear that my body was just breaking down muscle at that stage. Mm. So it's a very, the body can easily 
just increase amino acids. And that can help certain people if, if you have a tendency to break down muscle. In that sense, it could help your immune system by just giving you the amino acids whenever you need it, but then longer term, you'll have less muscle mass. Mm. I want to take a quick break to announce you that you can now order my book, The Longevity Leap. Containing over 8,000 references to scientific articles and studies, The Longevity Leap is an evidence-based overview of the biology of aging, chronic diseases that kill most people, and practical lifestyle routines that have been proven to improve your health and slow down aging. You can order the book at thelongevityleap.com. With your order, you will also get two bonus chapters, one about skin aging and the other about my personal routines. Head over to thelongevityleap.com to get your copy today. How many supplements are you taking now then? <laughs> I take 160 supplements a day. Yeah. And I kind of have a list of, there's about 90 things that I take that are, I've noticed some change in my blood from it, like significant enough, or there's some, something significant that I notice from it in life mm. that not just like a minor effect, it seems pretty significant. And that it helps me in some way. So there's still a gap of like 70 that are like things based on what you're reading about, or maybe it has a minor effect, but nothing significant, right. or I don't notice anything significant in my blood tests. So there's, there's a, that's kind of my goal is to eventually just take things that I notice a change based on some blood mm -hmm. marker. So there's all like things that you're taking because you see the results and the things you're like uh, experimenting with right now too. Yeah, either yes. experimenting or let's Very say, nice. for example, astaxanthin. Mm -hmm. I don't notice any benefits from that. Mm -hmm. I don't. But, you know, it's kind of just like you see some research and you're like, okay, it does this, that, and the other thing. Makes sense, yeah. And animals who took it lived longer and right. <laughs> it's like, all right, I'll take it, right? <laughs> yeah. You know, like, it maybe it's you get a slower rate of aging because some of the carotenoids they they claim help with that the aging rate yeah like you know eye health and so it was preventive kind of right but who knows right that's the thing is like i haven't noticed anything and i haven't clearly seen that oh i took acid scenting all of a sudden the marker moved quite a lot yeah, yeah maybe like have yeah, measured eye health or something or sun damage or because the Correct. Yeah, but I do measure sun damage, but I don't, I can't pinpoint, first of all, my sun damage has stayed the same mm. <laughs> since the last test. I, I can't pinpoint what, it would, maybe it would have been worse, I don't know, but the, the idea is that it's very, certain time, cert, it's very hard to pinpoint things if it's not very significant right. in the blood, yeah. meaning like, if it helps 5%, I won't be able to tell. Yeah, yeah. But there's certain things that I take and it's like this house, right? Mm. So some of them could even be amino acids. I took the amino acid and all of a sudden my amino acids in my blood doubled, right? So that's very clear. And then they stayed elevated. So that's very clear that this amino acid is doing something. And then, you know, over time I might also notice, okay, I could see this also improving my performance or this, that, and the other. Uh, but usually it's like, Either I notice something very strong in the blood or very significant in some issue I had or like if it's related to mood, I might not notice something very strong in the blood, but I noticed a significant effect on my mood. Mm. In that case, I'll, you know, it's like I consider that as some of the things that are like validated in my opinion. If, if I, if it's significant enough that I know, hey, this is having a significant effect on my mood. Mm. And you like pharmaceutical types or what are the, like medications or doing anything that most of them yeah i take some medications pharmaceuticals a lot of them are related to lowering lipids yeah. which i do see very clearly in the blood that they're working in there's also clinical trials as well um like the pcsk9 inhibitor clearly works yeah right? that lowers my lipoprotein a as well which i've elevated levels of and then my cholesterol as well. And this is mainly genetic yeah. based. So I have to take these things. Uh, and then bembidogast acid works very well for me. Azidamide, 
I take that as well. And that, can I say that I notice a huge difference? No, but it's like 10%. It's supposed to have a 10% effect in the cholesterol level. So mm. not that's an example of something that if it was like, a, if there weren't a lot of trials on it, I wouldn't be sure mm. like 100% what it's doing. It seems to have some effect, but yeah, wouldn't be sure. Uh, but then, so those are the three pharmaceuticals that I take for cholesterol. Right. Yeah, with a lot of the you know supplements and medications, is you need to find a balance between your own blood work and the clinical trials. Right. Because a lot of them are yeah, like you know, primary prevention, and you know they uh, work over the course of decades <laughs> essentially. Right. So it's hard to see changes even like within a year, even to know if there is any you know, actual effect. So you need to kind of trust some of the clinical trials. In that sense. But if you measure it enough, you can get some kind of idea. Often, like mm. it seems like a zetamide does something from yeah right. even if it's like you know minor right 10 percent yeah it seems like it, it seems like it lowers it somewhat i don't know how much but it, i'll tell you the pcsk9 inhibitor definitely works a lot for mm. me like that's like at least that's like a 50 percent for me mm. oh. yeah it's like 25 percent for the lp little a i think yeah 25 percent for lp little a and that i notice as well yeah. so these that has a very clear effect for me bempedoke acid works very well for me. I would, it could even be more than what the studies say. So it's like they, the studies show 20%, but I think I get a 20% decline by taking it. Well, I, let's it by taking it every other day. Mm. So you don't take it with it. No, I take it every what, other what day. Dose, yeah. The regular dose, which it's 180 milligrams. So, the, so yeah, I take that. Um, I find that I don't need it every day. Just, my, I was actually even taking it twice a week. I just started with every other day. Mm. Um, cause do you notice any like side effects from some of those supplements or anything? Some of them do have side effects. Uh, I had to stop taking certain supplements for side effects like Berbera. Okay. What did I, you I had muscle. I, oh, yeah. yeah. Give me muscle. Pack. I've been taking like one gram, even pretty regularly. I don't guess you have it. <laughs> Yeah, it's some. It seems weird, but berberine seems to give me muscle pain. Mm. Um, you know, it, it happens from a couple supplements. I get it from Buzzwellia. Mm. Uh, I get it from stands. Yeah, that's like individual based. Yeah, so it didn't give me muscle pain berberine until I started exercising more. Interesting, because I was taking it for years before that. that although, time. although I do have had a little bit of like elbow pain over the last few weeks. And I've been taking berberine as well, so that might help. Or that might cause it slightly, because maybe re reduce protein synthesis, um, maybe. Mm. So but we'll see. I need to stop taking it for a bit. <laughs> Could be. What did the elbow pain come from? Was that an injury or just? Yeah, I just did a bit of too much muscle ups. <laughs> um, okay. too, uh, too vigorously. Uh, yeah. So there was, yeah, what other? I also take some pharmaceuticals for sleep. Okay, good one. If I need it. So I take low dose naltrexone. That's the antihistamine. Um, it's, uh, it's not specific for that. It's, uh, it's, uh, it, it helps with the opioid system. And I like how I feel on it. Improves my mood and helps me sleep better. I, I find it improves my sleep. So I take that. And then there's certain pharmaceuticals that I'll take as needed, like low dose trazodone mm -hmm. as needed. If I need to, if I'm traveling or if I wake up in the middle of the night, I want to go back to sleep reliably. Mm -hmm. That's it. Good. Um, I don't take it as a standard though. And then I'll take an antihistamine if I want to go to sleep for longer, like doxylamine, succinate. That's mm -hmm. if I'm on a long haul flight and I want to get knocked out. So that, these are like, and then meclizine also, if I'm traveling and I want to help with sleep, I don't take it every night, but I take it relatively often also because it's an mTOR inhibitor. So it, mm. it helps with longevity. Gotcha. Yeah. So that's kind of like, um, you just the rapamycin. Yeah. I take rapamycin as well. That's just for longevity, nothing specific. I also find that it helps my food sensitivities. Mm. Yeah. The immune suppressor. Mm -hmm. Well, it causes tolerance to the foods. Mm. It doesn't just, Suppress it. it actually causes you to tolerate the food. Wow. 
which is which is a little different, right? So you're getting like, tools that you weren't able to. Absolutely, yeah. Well, so eggs, Gary, a whole bunch of stuff that I wasn't having before. That's interesting. So I would say that for me, it's not only an anti-aging drug, it's actually a, a treatment mm. for my food sensitivity. So I, I like that. I like the rapamycin. Um, I take four milligrams a week. And then what other pharmaceuticals do I take? Um, ketamine <laughs> as a replacement for alcohol, pretty much. Mm. Yeah. If I, or if I, if I ever get into a loop, which doesn't really happen, uh, very often, but it's, it's a, I find it's a good replacement for alcohol. It's healthier than alcohol. Right. I saw a few weeks ago, there's this new ketone ester drink, like a spring sauce, so it's supposed to be like the alcohol replication. So. Gives you the buzz, but you get ketones <laughs> instead. So it's like like some sort of a larger dose of ketone esters, uh, in, you know, like a like a like a white claw or something. <laughs> uh, I haven't tried it, but uh, something found online. So that could be even like some sort of a use case if if, if I'll try it out at some point. But interesting. Yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, I wonder. I mean, some of these promises usually don't work. Nothing alcohol replacements. Yeah, don't see it. Um, or for also probably be like banned. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You're like, oh, this is too good. <laughs> what What do you like? You know, people say like all oh, these supplements. So, so like, uh, why do you need them? Like, what are your arguments against that? Well, so I would I would uh, separate them into different categories. I think you could make an argument about 70 of the 160 why do you need them because mm. those are the ones i said i don't really clearly notice like huge impact in any way um the other ones like i said either they help a blood biomarker or they help some kind of symptom or issue that i have mm. so um why do i need you know it's like i would say also a lot of natural stuff like let's say for me mood is a big thing and recently i've come back as like when when i'm tested in the big five there's like these six facets of the neuroticism they're re all related to mood i got very low on all those facets which means my mood is uh the best that they've ever tested here okay so it's extremely rare to get very low on all those um, whereas that wasn't always the case, I think it's changed quite a lot. And so for me, I take about 15 supplements just for mood, mm. just for mood. So if somebody has great mood or they don't want to improve their mood, they don't care about it or whatever. Um, then that's 15 that they can knock out right there. Right. Yes. Just not yes. <laughs> right. Um, I might even take a little, yeah, I mean. That's like 15 purely for mood. And there's probably, there's definitely other things that help with mood as well, but that's not maybe the main purpose. Hmm. Uh, and then there is different other things. There's like, let's say, I've had autoimmune issues in the past. So I would say there's a bunch of things that are for lowering inflammation, helping with my immune system. Hmm. Uh, there's a bunch of things that help me with my immunity as well. Like, uh, I would say that I don't get less sick. Uh, the frequency that I get sick is not different, but the impact to my life of getting an infection is completely different. So, whereas before I would not be able to function, now I can do whatever I, I can go about my daily life without a problem. Mm. It's the frequency hasn't changed, but the, you know, it's like you. I, let's say if I go COVID is going around, I'll still get COVID, but I'll still I'll be able to function instead of being out for a week, yeah, or whatever it is, right? Like, so that's kind of, you know, I'll still function perfectly fine, and you know, just even be able to exercise and do whatever, right? So, for me, immune system is a big one. There's a lot of things I take for that, and then. Uh, yeah. And so there's kind of like, I have a lot of these goals that, you know, some people, they don't have any mood issues. I think it's rare, but it mm. happens. Yeah. Their means they never get sick, you know, and 
Some things are to help me build muscle. Correct. Even creatine is something that um, pretty much everyone benefits from. <laughs> well, uh, yeah, but it, but but I'm not even sure how that helps me personally. Like I haven't seen any benefit, and I haven't seen any. Like it's not even one. I don't even know if I consider it as one in ninety things. But it's something I take just because I think. First of all, probably it probably is significant because all the amino acids that are used to create creatine, I've been on the lower end. Uh, so what is it? It's like arginine, methionine, and glycine. Mm. Are those the three? Well, glycine for sure, yeah. And then it's methionine as well, and I think arginine. And I've been lower on all those three in the past. So just as an amino acid supplement, yeah, seems like it would not be a bad idea. But I don't know if I notice any significant difference of amino acids from taking it. But the idea is that. There's good research on it, and you know, so it's like there's certain things I'll take for muscle mass, uh, like beta alanine, creatine. I can't say I notice huge, like it's hard to notice, but you see their end results. Like my muscle mass has been going up from seventy percent to seventy five percent. So right. there's a change, you know. I can't be very clear about exactly what did the change, but it's going in the right direction. And so that means I'm doing something right. Yeah. Uh, but it, for things like that, I look at the research because it's very hard to know, am I gaining more muscle? Like, I, I can't tell really, right? So Ooh. it's just too hard to tell. So I think that sometimes I'll rely on research, but I have my goals. Some, some people may not have a goal that they want to build muscle or... If they do, maybe they're building muscle great without any of these things and they don't need any of them, right? Or if, so I think it's dependent on the person. I think I did notice some benefits from beta alanine just in terms of like energy levels, but sometimes it's hard to know exactly. Right, right. Yeah, you're just trying to optimize these yeah. areas. Yeah. Um, and there's, yeah, there's certain things. I think um, th then there's certain things that help me quite a lot that and very impactful uh and then sometimes you have to take things to counteract the side effects of other things mm. it's like a balancing act right so um yeah i found that i needed a lot more sulfur could be because i'm taking supplements and your body uses sulfur to detox mm. so when you're taking 160 supplements a day maybe you need more sulfur and yeah that could be a, a side effect right but i just take more sulfur and then what I find is that uh, if you take more sulfur, I think you need more molybdenum. enough. <laughs> it kind of, <laughs> so there's, there's sometimes there's a balancing act, but overall um, the results have been, you know, like you take something, then maybe you need something else. Like some of the B vitamins, when you take them, they utilize amino acids and other things more hmm. and you might run out of them. So it's, it's a little bit of a balancing act. Right, um, not so simple to just take a lot of B vitamins and yeah, but oh, that's another thing though. Like, let's say my homocysteine, I probably take at least five supplements for methylation mm. because genetically I'm an under methylator. So even if I throw everything at methylation, like any supplement you could think of for methylation, my homocysteine still is like ten, which which is pretty good, but. You know what I'm saying? Like, you yeah. could also, some people are 10 without doing anything. Yeah. yeah. So when I say 10, I, mean, I was just a, a 12. I, I think it went up for probably, I was fine. It's, who knows what? But um, normally I'm like, let's say, the last time was an 8.8. .8. But now I'm taking five grams of TMG. That, oh, really? Yeah. Right. My, full, my methylfolate and my B12 were like off the charts. <laughs> Meaning like it was just the high, like it was really high. Uh, well, the B12 was very high. And then the folate, it doesn't go beyond 24. So just maxed out. Right. And I was also taking a good amount of B6, 50 milligrams a day. I even upped it now to because I still want to, I think more will reduce yes. my homocysteine based on the amino acid panel, actually. It was clear that I could even use more B6. So 
I'm, I up to 75 milligrams a day. But so I'm taking all these B vitamins, right? And uh, what else am I taking for methylation? Uh, MSM, take eight grams a day. Mm. Huh. Yeah. I take taurine, which is brings homocysteine down three grams a day. And I take 1800 milligrams of NAC, which brings down homocysteine. Mm. So I'm doing all these things. And I know that they work to bring down homocysteine individually. Um, that's not so much of a question. Like I've seen them work. Taurine, I don't know if I've seen work, but the studies show that it works. It brings it down about like 10 to 15 percent. But you know, you I do all these things, and then you know my home assistant is still 12. Whereas I've done like much less stuff for some other people. When let's say Liver King, <laughs> his home assistant was 12 point something. And now it's five. Wow. And so I could see very clearly that he has responded way more effectively to like much less stuff mm. than, than me. Like I just have to do way more right. to bring down my homocysteine than other people. Right. So it's very clear, like, you know, so that's an example of things that I need to take for me because I just, you know, and, and it's like I'm running out of things that are going to bring down homocysteine um, just because, you know, I've already maxed the dosage on all the individual stuff, right? You don't want to take more than five grams of TMG a day. Like, nobody studied that yeah. long-term. Right. And, like, already taking the B vitamins, like, everything that you could take, right? So, it's like the... Genetics, yeah, has a huge... Yeah. I'm doing all these things. I think, uh, but over, but I mean, my, I think uh, probably something was just off there. Meaning, I think uh, I have been able to bring it down to nine or eight, eight point eight. Um, and, and it was lower before, so it goes low when I don't exercise. <laughs> I don't exercise, no problem. You just do it. Yeah, and and so that's the thing is like for me, if I exercise, I use a lot of mental growth. And then I need to take a lot of supplements in order to counteract that. Mm. So I, I find that exercise makes me take another like 15 supplements a day. Mm. Interesting. Counteract some of the negatives of exercise. But, and I think that's probably not the case with most people, but like, you know, exercise is still beneficial, quite beneficial for all these other areas. So you want the positives, you don't want the negatives. Yeah. Um, how did the, yeah. how did you start working with Liver King? <laughs> he signed up to South Dakota, actually. Right. And then, uh, you know what? We, I, like he, he got like a voter package that had a consult and I don't even know if he did that on purpose or not. But anyway, I just reached out to him. I said, Hey, let's going to call whatever. We spoke for an hour. And, uh, then I said, Hey, let me, uh, you know. I'll be in Texas. I could stop by the ranch. It's like, yeah. You know, it's like, fuck yeah. <laughs> I was like, all right, dude. So I, I just came. I didn't know what to expect. I was supposed to come for like, I thought I was going to come for like a couple of days. But then um, we started working together and I started, uh, you know, making certain changes to his regimen. Mm. Right. Um, and then he started to have benefits. So I started to make more and more and more. And then he starts to see benefits in a whole bunch of different ways, how we felt in different ways, blood Love markers, me. everything. And uh, so he just like kept wanting me to stay more. Mm. <laughs> like, I ended up staying three weeks. Nice. <laughs> I went to, with Mexico. He's now taking supplements. Right. He's taking supplements. <laughs> <yeah. laughs> yeah. I mean, normally I wouldn't discuss it because, you know, it's, it's, pro it's no, privacy, he but he, he was public about it. So, yeah. <laughs> uh, that's he calls me his high priest. <laughs> <laughs> priest go in. <laughs> yeah, high priest. Uh and he just but but I like working with people like that because he's an animal. Like he he'll does do anything that you tell him, yeah. <laughs> he'll do it. Like if he trusts you, right? If he doesn't trust you, he's not gonna do anything. Right. But if he trusts you, he'll he'll do everything and like he's just gonna get it done. You know, he'll get it done. He's an action guy. And so he's just like 
it's just like, you know, well, he could take down 30 pills in one go. <laughs> and it's just like, he can down more pills than me. Like he's quicker at downing pills than me. <laughs> yeah. He's, yeah. He's an animal. So, um, but you know, a lot of his stuff is, he pushes himself really hard. Mm. Like whether it's exercise, he will push himself really hard. And so I think the ancestral lifestyle that he lives is a very good framework, a base, but people, very few people are like him and they, they don't push themselves. Like he has, he has a very strong sense of purpose and drive, which may, you know, make him just go, go, go all the time. And as a result of that, it just, um, you know, it, it's his nervous system is activated and then he over exercises. Mm. Like if, if he just didn't exercise that much, he'd probably, probably be like, better, better record. Yeah. A hundred percent. He knows that too, but it's just think, something that he really likes to do. So like it makes him feel, you know, like he likes working hard, right? He likes to earn things and, um, he likes to create value. And, uh, so I, I think that. But with that, uh, you know, so he needs, it, it's not, you can't just live a, a, and I think that in the modern lifestyle, my personal opinion is that everybody needs supplements because it's just, just because it's different, whatever the reason, I think, first of all, people have always taken herbal stuff, right? They've always had different kinds of medicines, but I think that, um, also people want to live longer, right? Once upon a time, and you know, he lived to forty. It just didn't matter, right? Right. And then, I yeah, like you were done to exercise. You're only going to get so far for like maximum life extension. There, yeah, there. Yeah, it's not going to take you past 120, like the, like regular lifestyle. Yeah, and I think there's a few things that are just very different in the modern lifestyle that we never had. Mm -hmm. So, the amount of infections and toxins is very different. And right. that has a big effect, some more on some people and some on less. But for me, I think it was probably more, some people maybe less, but the idea is that it's got a huge effect, very hard to underestimate that. And just the amount of toxins, heavy metals, everything, right? Yeah. Plastics, we don't know what EMFs are doing, but like there's just thousands of toxins that we're exposed to that we haven't ever been exposed to yeah so that's one and then the amount of infections that we're exposed to that we have if you grew up in a community first of all there's no cars no airplanes no no pollution right so uh, i mean almost no pollution right so we have pollution we have higher levels of co2 higher levels of, it's just it's hard to then there's the modern environment with artificial lighting and it, with it's stress. You can't escape it. Yeah. Right. I think once upon a time when we were just farmers or just like hunters, whatever, it's like, you know, there was like a community of a hundred people. Yeah. You had to just pick like somebody to marry. It wasn't like, you didn't have like a million options. So if no divorce, if you get divorced, you probably die, right? right? Like you just wouldn't make it. Yes. Uh, you lift to 40 and it was just like, you know, it was kind of like, it is what it is. You know, you know, you're not like, there, there were certain stressors, but it was kind of like, you know, there was, there was no depression. You just had to like live, right? Just to survive. You had to like struggle and survive. Mm. You don't have time to be depressed or anything. Right. And so I think that the amount of differences, and I'm, I'm not even, there's probably a lot of other ones, but you know, the idea is that we're not living anywhere close to what we were. Living. And even if we were, that doesn't mean it's even what Literally. we live yeah. to 80, right? <laughs> we yeah. would die much earlier probably. Uh, whether it's from an accident or, or even just, you know, just the, our bodies weren't designed to live. Yeah. 200. Yeah. They, there's just, they, there's not any serious evolutionary purpose to, to live till after child 
you know, after you're going to have children. Yeah. Um, but, uh, yeah, so I think, um, uh, yeah, so I, I think overall it's like we have, so I think the infection is probably a huge piece too, because if you're in a community of a hundred people, you're not, there's very little travel going on, mm -hmm. right? Like there's no airplanes, there's no cars, even a horse and buggy were new inventions, right? They're pretty new. No. They didn't even have horses until a few thousand years ago, mm -hmm. right? Maybe 2,000 years ago, 3,000, I don't know what the, even if it was 3,000, it wasn't widespread until yeah. more modern. And so you had to walk everywhere. And how far are you going to walk already? Right? It's just like even boats, they didn't, they didn't travel that far. Yeah. They only reached America. It's like, it's like how far are you traveling, right? The idea is, and then, and then even then, like in the 1500s, you see the black, like 1300s, the black plague, they wiped out like half of humanity. Yeah. <laughs> right? Like, it wasn't always rainbows, <laughs> even back when, when it was just not. So I, I think that as time went on, you had all these plagues, and that's how people got wiped out, infections. Mm -hmm. Whereas now, okay. we have things to, like, manage these infections, but, you, you know, you're flying, I, the amount that I'm flying all over the world, there's 8 billion people. Everybody's just, you go on an airplane, it's just an yeah. infection. <laughs> you know, you, you go, you, you're going from one place to the other, you're getting global infections all of a sudden, right? So it's like infection that starts in China and Wuhan would have never made its way out of that area because who's like yeah. walking out of, you know, you got to travel in bar. Um, by the time you walk three days, the infection's gone even. Yeah. Right? And so it's like, but now we have just, I I know, like, I'll get an infection once a month based on my blood tests, mm -hmm. right? Because I track it. Yeah. But I don't, I don't get very sick, so I'm robust. So I think there's a lot of, you know, people talk about, uh, we got here because of, I, I think there's a lot of value to an ancestral lifestyle, but it's not enough. And that, I think he's realized that as well, that it's not enough. You need. We have modern technology. We have modern medicine. We yeah. want to take the things. We're able to now measure your g genetics, 200 million variants, your blood, a whole bunch of other things. We have all this new technology. Every supplement is a new technology, every drug. And it doesn't mean you need to take every one, but we have all these new technologies that, uh, whether it's software, or that you can really, I think, take somebody who may have lived to 40 and make them live to 100. Whereas there could have been somebody who lived 90 back then, or even maybe 100, and that you still have that today, but it's extremely rare. Whereas I think with technology, everyone, everybody could do yeah. that if they put in the time, yeah. effort, whatever, if they, if they actually implement things. So I think that, um, you know, uh, He's he's he lives in certain ways. He lives a very healthy lifestyle with his ancestral lifestyle, but I also think that he realizes that you know in certain things he does that are not so ancestral. Um, and, and I think he's public about those things now. Um, but he is. But the, the thing is that, um, and he's realized that actually what's ideal is to take modern technology and add it like the base is ancestral, right? So. It's got these nine tenets and then, you know, like sleep, like all these things that are basic. And I think he's right about those, right? That's, the, yeah. you know, exercise, move, whatever. Uh, and so he's, he's got, I think he's right about all those things, but now I think he's realizing that you could do all those as the base and then have, uh, use modern technology to fill in any of the gaps that you need, depending on um you know what some people have more gaps than others i think i had a lot of gaps mm, yeah right? i mean yeah. at some point i was disabled so not everybody's like that right i i need to improve my mood a lot uh my cholesterol lipoprotein levels are much higher mm. 
Not everybody has that, right? So that you have differences. Some people, I think a lot of these differences were evolved from, um, so like, let's say lipoprotein A, it might help with certain clotting or recovery if you get a cut or injury. No, In the wonder world, it's a bit not needed. Yeah, but when are we getting cuts and injuries, right? So it's yeah. like, even in, so if you think about it, even in, let's say if I was living a super ancestral lifestyle, I still have hot lipoprotein A. Yeah. Living, you know, and some people might be more susceptible to clotting and more cholesterol and more, uh, you know, all these other stuff, more, you know, methylation and, and it just, in a certain environment, it could have been beneficial because maybe I would have healed quicker or I would have been built muscle quicker. But then in this environment, you know, maybe I'm just not going to live to like a hundred. Yeah. So that's where I think the modern technology comes in. Number one is our environment is very different. Number two is our genetics are very different and not everybody's genetics are geared towards longevity or having a great mood. Maybe, you know, depression could be like something that helps drive people in certain situations or anxiety. And But in in a, a world of abundance, nobody's starving. Yeah, so there are definitely like a lot of differences between people and the like precision health and understanding your own body is the key to uh, making those adjustments based on those results. Uh, self the coach is the website right where people can check out their genetics yeah ex absolutely and with genetics genetics can be used for a couple things number one is to see what your disease is you're susceptible susceptible to yeah so we see even in the modern world it's clear some people don't get certain diseases right uh, they get certain diseases first than others and centenarians they just delay the diseases they get so you could be more or less resilient and evolutionarily, it may have not mattered, but uh, because you, you, anyway, it didn't matter if you lived, if you like, you know, just looked to sick, you would, you would have died from something else anyway, right? Mm. Uh, but now, when we want to live longer, it makes a difference. You want to see what you're susceptible to. It can help you prioritize certain recommendations over others. Uh, we also are introducing pharmacogenomics. So we have a new product now. It's called Longevity Screener. You can look at which diseases it gives you more absolute risk scores rather than your higher, less likely. So there's different ways of looking at it in terms of genetics, but now we found uh, we, we've been able to introduce absolute risk scores. To tell you like hey, you're very high on this area. You really this is what your weakest point is, and then um, so prioritizing recommendations, and then yeah, just seeing all your different susceptibilities and whatnot. Um, and then there's pharmacogenomics, which we're going to be introducing soon. You can see even what drugs or what we'll help you. And then the rest is you want to look at as many lab tests and do as much testing as possible. So it's like I see genetics as like a framework, a blueprint, and then you want to kind of see what is going on currently. And uh, you can upload that data as well and get better recommendations. Nice. That's awesome. Um, I'll do it here. Time to see you again. Yeah, likewise. All right, that's it for this episode. If you like it, then make sure you click a like and subscribe. And make sure you check out my new book, The Longevity Leap, at thelongevityleap.com.